Welcome back everybody, this is always back with the next video of JavaScript Essential Training Series. Uh, in this video we are going to talk about timers in JavaScript. Timers are a great way to animate your object and let's say if you want to give a gap of like 10 seconds or 5 seconds between you want that page to load and the function to fire up. So let me give you a demo here first. So let's say we create a function. And I'm going to name my function timer five seconds. And then in the function, we use the simple method, let's say, uh, just the alert box. And then here I'm going to say this is the five second timer. I'm going to save the file. Let's go back to the page. If I refresh that, as you can see that the function did not fire up because we haven't called that function yet. Now, you can call the function by just typing the name, add parentheses, and a semicolon. But now, I'm going to use a timer for that. So I'm going to type set, and then here is a function timeout. And then, all you need is a set out time sorry, the, the, the function you want to call and the timeout number. So the timer goes in milliseconds. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to type the name of the function and then separate it with comma. And then as you can see on the top, Real Studio Code is telling us that now timeout number. So it goes in a millisecond. So if I want it to pop up after two seconds, so I'll just type 2000. And then save the file, add semicolon, save the file. Let's go back here. And I'm going to refresh the page and I want to wait for two seconds and let's see if it pop up. There we go. So we said five seconds, but it pop up after two seconds because we set the 2000 here. Let's just do the five second. And then I'm going to just click now. So you guys see that the uh, five seconds. There we go, after five seconds it popped up. So time is a great way to create an animation. This is a great way. And uh, now we're gonna look at another example, a little bit of advanced example. Now we are going to write a function to scroll through the images. Now I have a few images here, this one, this one, and this one, right? What if you want to scroll through and set a timer and then JavaScript application would should automatically replace these images by the time. Now, how we do that? Now, I'm going to create an HTML development. So let's just create a div element. We give ID of image and then inside that div we are going to add an image so we add image tag and then src source would be images slash and then we set that to number four image okay dot j p g okay now let's save the file let's refresh the page and then as you can see we have these images here now now i've given the tag image uh, image as an ID for that. So what I'm gonna do here now, actually we don't even have to give the ID to this image. I can give ID here, ID image. Okay, it must be unique, so we delete this here now. Save the file, and now we are going back to our JS file, and here I'm going to delete this function. So first of all, we need to get a handle for this container, which is our image image. So we can get that by using var and I'll say my image is equal to document dot get element by ID and here we type image. And I'm pretty sure that I spelled it right. Image I M A G E. That's right. So we go back to JS file. Now we got the handle. We got the control over that element. Now we need to have an a, a, some kind of a variable which has the index of those images, such as true for like PNG. So what I'm going to do here, we create another variable, 
and we create this an array. So we'll just name it array. Array image is equal to and then add an array by adding a square brackets and here we're going to add quotation first and then the part of those images some images which is the folder name here right so not to get you guys confused the images is the folder name slash and the name of the image let's say true dot png oops it's jpg yep it's png actually so add a comma to separate another index and then here add a quotation again and i would just add four so images slash four dot jpg and add a comma again and then the last image we have here is like we need to type the images part so like dot png that's a png as well now we have an array of uh, this uh, images okay so we have these three images in the array now we are going to use the index as well so we can just create another variable here and I'll just say image uh, whatever name you want to give so we set that to zero for now and then down here we are going to write a function which will help us to rotate or change that image after two or three seconds so let's write that function. So I'm going to start with the function keyword and then we just say uh, change image is fine and then add a code block here and then we are going to access this image first. So this is the image we accessing from our HTML document which is which has the image there. So we can access that first. So I'm going to type my image dot set attribute. I'm going to set an attribute first. So in the parentheses, I'm going to type the first attribute name. So what we want to change, let's say. So what if we change just the source? What if we change the source after three seconds? Then it would be able to change, right? So let's type SRC and then in the next one, like uh, add a comma, and then we need to add a value of that. So once we change the source, what would be the value? Now for the value, we have created an array image and then we have the index as well. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to type array, let's give a space, array image. And then because it's an array, then we can type in what, what index. So array start from zero. So we just type image index so it has the numeric digits of zero why we did that because we need to increment this we could have just one here or zero here but that wouldn't work because we need to make it dynamic now we got that let's go down now after changing the source we need to increment this because once the compiler is going to come here it's going to change the source and it's going to go to the value which is going to be image array this is the array and then it's going to see what's the index number now so it was zero before and now the second time when it comes down it would be one like here okay so once it's one then how do we do that we need to image index plus plus every time compiler comes down i want to add one to it and then I actually have three images. So what we can do here to make sure that our code works, we can type if image index is greater than equal to, let's say, we can type here two because we have uh, three images here, zero on zero index, one index and two index but that would be static we want to make it dynamic so we can use another method which would be array array image dot length okay so it will automatically check what's the length of the array now we got that and then let's go down into the if code block and then we say if that it's greater than equal to array image dot length which would be two, then what I want to do, I want to set that index value to zero again. So let's have image index is equal to zero again. Let's save everything. And now uh, we need to set the, we need to call this function, right? We need to call this function. So uh, we can set 
interval time. So before we use the set timeout, this time I'm going to use another function which is set interval. And then the same thing, we need to type the function name and then the number and the, the value of those seconds. So what is the function name, which is a change image, comma, and the value, if we want to change this to every three seconds automatically, we type 3000. Remember, it's the milliseconds. Now let's add a semicolon. And we've done our code here. Let's go and have a look. We need to refresh the page. And the first time I get this subscribe image, oops, it changed automatically. And now if I leave the page, it's changing. Oops, the like image is too big. We need to apply the CSS. So as you can see that every two seconds when this uh, interval fires up, every three seconds actually because it's 3000 here. So every three seconds when this uh, line call this function, we have the different index value because we are changing, we're incrementing it. And if and the image length goes back to length, then it will go back to zero again. To change those images randomly, we could add the round or random method on this, what I've shown you in the last video. So I'm pretty sure you would be able to use those methods and make dynamic things with JavaScript now. But we're getting into it. We're going to be working on the form soon. And then I'm going to show you how to debug JavaScript. And there's so many things coming up like animations in Java, creating menus in Java dynamically. So stay tuned for that, guys. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And then make sure you join our Facebook group. I drop a link in the description. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.